Hello everybody, uh, Brad with uh, Guitologist here and uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, something a little bit different than I usually take a look at. This is an old school about 1950s RCA Victrola. Uh, you can see the Victrola little his master's voice dog right there. Uh, and according to this tag on this thing it is a model 45 EY4 I'm assuming there's a model number somewhere on this thing I haven't really looked um, I got this at an estate sale this says they paid ten dollars for it I gave five dollars for this thing at the estate sale uh, in they said non-working condition and we'll see what about it does not work and what about it does work and uh, See if we can bring this thing back to life. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, stick around. Alright, well first things first, we're just going to give this thing a trial by fire. I'm not even going to pretend to dial it up on a Variac or anything like that. We're not going to screw around with all that. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to need caps and everything anyway. Uh, they did say it didn't work. So let's see um, what it's doing or not doing. Uh, we'll just go ahead and kick on the power. And let's see here. Well, we have movement. It's slowly coming up a little faster. Looks like we got a light here. I don't know if it's shining or not. It's kind of hard to tell. We should get sound any second if it's going to have sound. Yep. got some sound not very pretty sound though definitely needs a cap job you can tell it needs a cap job because if I turn down the volume that hum is still pretty predominant it doesn't really follow the, the volume knob much so we've got really leaky bad electrolytic capacitors tone knob seems to work And it's a good sign that that's spinning. Let's see what happens when we... Okay, so that switch does work. Okay, so anyway, that's a start. Let's see if we got anything out of the stylus. We do have something out of the stylus, so... Yeah, this might just be a, a cap job and a pretty uninteresting video, but we'll go through it anyway and just see. Well, to get the chassis out, we've got to pull these knobs out here first. And uh, one of the things I noticed that I didn't really notice before was this um, This had been broken at one time. And somebody tried to glue this. And look, look at the glue job. I mean, were they high at the time? or I mean, that's just the awfulest glue job. It's like they got the glue everywhere except the edge of the piece. Crazy. Anyway, we'll see if we can polish, maybe polish that out a little bit. I've got some uh, automotive uh, polish. It's a uh, semi-abrasive, and we might be able to take a lot of that stuff off of there and kind of smooth that over, and maybe even touch that up where you can't see the, you can't see it as easily. So we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, but first things first, let's get this chassis out of here. Well, actually, before we take the chassis out, we might as well look at the bottom of the unit here. And it looks like we might be missing, uh, looks like maybe we're missing a cover here. I don't know. Maybe not, though. Um, this is a model 45EY4, as the other tag said. And it's called an Electrola. There's a serial number there. Uh, the UL statement. Notice of warranty. I wonder what the warranty was like. Let's see. The obligation of RCA Victor under the warranty is limited to the repair or replacement of parts found defected, defective in material or workmanship. And the return of such repaired or replaced parts, FOB point of shipment. RCA neither assumes nor authorizes any person to assume for it any other liability in connection. 
with the instrument. Da -da 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 -da. Um, got a tube layout there. A couple of 35 volt tubes, 35Z5 GT, that'll be the rectifier. 35L6 is the power. Two of those actually. And a 12SC7 for the preamp. Tells you how to change the pilot lamp and all that good stuff. But let's go ahead and uh, and get the chassis out and take a look at it. Alright, here we are with the chassis out and uh, we can see this is a nice big 8 inch speaker that's in this thing. That's actually really nice compared to what some of these things are. Some of these things are real tiny little speakers but this is a nice big 8 inch with those two uh, 35 L6's in the output. Very cool. This thing ought to sound pretty pretty decent. 274, 150, I believe that is the 50th week of 1951, if I am not mistaken, on that uh, speaker code. Nice on the co speaker. Those are probably a chassis number, I would imagine, one of those. Controls on the side. Uh, check this out. This um, grill cloth is just held together with this with this cardboard <laughs> and just taped in. It's kind of interesting. I mean, I guess it's done the job for 60, 70 years now, so can't complain too badly about that. Um, the cool thing about this is I'm not going to have to pull this record changer to service it, I don't believe. I might have to pull the um, I might have to pull the spindle and everything off, or the, the table itself off, and to do that it looks like we have a little uh, clamp here, but when we remove that I believe that will all come loose, if I'm not mistaken, so that we can service everything, and we're going to be able to reach everything else just, just like this. So we will go ahead and fully lubricate this and everything while we're at it, but let's get this bottom uh, sheet metal off and uh, take a look inside the chassis. Alright, here we are with the chassis out and uh, open on the bench. First thing I notice, uh, this says a 6-2 right here. I don't know if that's a year. Maybe it's not 1952, maybe it's 1962. I see a date code here uh, with a 2 on it second week of either 52 or 62. This might be a 62. Uh, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I'm not real up and up on the timelines of uh, these old 45 record players. I, I guess um, I could look it up. And I probably will before posting this video and whatever's in the video description, I'm sure that's the proper year. So, But we can see here, uh, just we have the usual uh, paper and wax capacitors just you know, with all the wax half melted and everything just nasty in that regard. But we're going to come in here and just shotgun every one of these caps over here. Shotgun uh, this big electrolytic. And uh, this thing probably should hum for a, or not hum, actually should purr rather, uh, for a long time to come. So let's um, let's come in here and, and do all of that work and then see where that gets us. So here's the capacitor um, pulled out of its little retainer and it looks like we have an 80 at 150 and a 50 at 150. So let's dig those up. Alright, since there really isn't probably going to be much troubleshooting with this thing, it's just going to be a recap. I thought it might take a, a moment to show how um, I typically would do a recap on this thing uh, just because um, I usually skip these steps in most of my videos, but uh, this might be a good opportunity to kind of at least show like one cap here and how we're going to do it. Um, we'll take this cap right here for instance. Um, can't see the value on it, uh, but we have some nice long leads that are left that go directly to the socket. Rather than getting my, um, my iron and trying to heat this up and pull the, the whole thing out of the socket, we're not going to do that. We're not going to risk breaking off this pin of the socket and then end up having to replace an entire socket where we all we had to do was replace a, uh, a capacitor. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip this out and leave enough lead 
uh, on the socket so that we can we can take it and do something called J hooking but what I usually do is kind of a more of an O hook I mean you can do a J hook sort of like that uh, leaving it open-ended uh, but I usually bring it on around and curl it up into more of a more of an O almost uh, but you do that with both ends leaving enough that you can do that in both places and uh, you saw how that one was kind of down around to the back side uh, we'll try to follow that if we can with our new uh, with our new capacitor we want to pull that that little bit off of there Now we noticed that one had um, had some uh, insulation on the one leg, and we will want to probably replicate that at least on the one leg. So there are our hooks, um, and now let's see what value that capacitor is. All right, that old capacitor is a .01 microfarad that'll be easy enough we got a ton of those let's see 0 0.01 and the capacitors I um, have stuck to for a long time now uh, are these uh, red capacitors you can get these at antique electronic supply Mauser just about anybody who sells parts will carry these and uh, they're less expensive than like say the orange drops are and uh, I've never had any real problems out of them. I've, there have been a couple of instances where um, I've, you know, been bending them to prepare them to put into a, a circuit and pulled one of, one of the legs off, uh, but that's kind of a rare thing. But I think what we're going to do actually is come just over the top of the socket rather than going around. That way we don't have to worry about even putting um, insulation on that leg. We just won't even mess with that. Uh, but essentially, we're going to take some of this off, so I'll shorten these legs just a little bit. And what I do is just pre-prepare it uh, and kind of give it a J-hook here. And the idea is we're going to come underneath. Hook it something like that. That will allow us to come underneath, like so. And then I will bend it the rest of the way over, and then use my uh, little needle nose to clamp it on there. And while we have this one leg nice and secure, I'm going to go ahead and solder that in. So first thing to heat heat the work a little bit. And then come in with our solder. And what that's done is prevented us from having to uh, try to desolder all of that and risk um, screwing that up the socket. And then what we want to do is come over here. <clears throat> And uh, just we'll just push this one through and come in with our needle nose. And same thing, we'll just bend it up and around like so. And I always like to give it a good smash to get that nice and nice and tight on there. All right. So there's one down, and it looks like we have several more to go. Well, this is something that you see sometimes. Uh, they were churning out these units like this by the millions uh, back in the day, and it's not surprising that uh, every now and then you get you get a cold solder or a, a connection that's not soldered at all. Um, this capacitor I've clipped out on this side, but look at this leg right here. It's running up to this connection. I don't know if you can see that or not, but right in there, it's just wobbling free. 
and I haven't touched that with my iron at all. So that's just barely even connected. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing had problems even from the factory. Okay, we're moving along nicely here, but here's a situation where we run across kind of an oddball um, value. It's a .0056 microfarad. Um, a .0056 is pretty much equivalent to a .0047 or a .005 in modern terms. There's no reason to try to get that at a 56. This is not rocket science. This is a, this is a vintage tube amp. Um, it's not going to hurt anything to go to a .005. So if you run across something like that, uh, just go to the nearest value that you have. It's a modern equivalent, especially with tube gear. Um, some solid, solid state stuff might be a little more finicky and might want to see exact values. Um, you know, if you're using transistors or IC circuits, modern stuff, uh, sometimes you need the exact value uh, in order for the transistors to to function. Uh, but in this case, we're going to go with a, uh, a 0047 and call it a day. All right, here we are with the rewire completed. And as you can see, everything's a lot neater than it was. Uh, the new modern components make everything a little bit smaller, make everything fit in here a little nicer. So let's, uh, let's get it all uh, buttoned back up together. Um, Let's also go ahead and service the turntable, and uh, after that we'll try it out. Before we go on, let's see how bad some of these caps were. Uh, let's check the electrolytics first. Uh, this first one, the red, is supposed to be 80 microfarad. And holy crap, that one's reading 5 microfarad and climbing. I mean, look at that. That's that's real bad. And leaky. Yep, see that voltage staying up like that? That's not supposed to do that at all. And resistance wise, that sh that should stay open lead, but it's not staying open lead. So that's telling me it's passing uh, it's passing DC directly to ground. So this is this thing is way bad. Um, this other one, let's try this green one. Green is supposed to be 50, and look at that. That's, that one also is really bad. Five microfarad and climbing. This one's about as bad as the other one. 16 megs and dropping. But this one stays up too. Yeah, see this puts about two volts through, and if it's leaking at this low of a voltage, you know this is r way bad. Um, the fact that that's staying up around 1.4 volts DC it means it's passing 1.4 volts from this lead over to this lead uh, through the cap and the cap is supposed to be a dielectric and it's not supposed to really pass anything if it's good so uh, that's definitely not what we want to see let's uh, check out this other electrolytic this was a uh, this was a bypass cap whoops I need to turn that off this was a bypass cap so I don't really expect this one to be bad necessarily. Should be a five microfarad. It's drifted up to eight, but at least it's still working somewhat. It is leaky though. Yeah, not as leaky as these others, but that's still I needed to be replaced, so that's a good thing. Let's check out some of these others. This one is a. Uh, an 047. Let's see if we have anything here to grab a hold of. That one is a about double what it should have been. Let's see, hang on. Yeah, that's about double what it should have been. Uh, this one should be an 015. Let's see. Uh, that one's a, uh, not too bad. Not too bad. 
Yeah, some of these caps aren't, uh, I don't think these aren't going to be quite as bad as quite as bad as the uh, electrolytics were. Double O sixty eight. Yeah, that one's that one's way off. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say most of these are probably gonna be pretty bad. And if I were to test it on a machine that would test them at a higher voltage, uh, I would probably see a lot of these leaky as well. That's a point. Yeah, point. That's that's about double its value, more or less. So yeah, pretty much uh, all of these really needed to be replaced. These old uh, paper and wax caps, and look at how many of them there are. That's two, four, six, eight, twelve, fourteen. So we've got sixteen caps in this thing that we had to that we had to replace. Uh, but let's get it back in and fire it up and see what it sounds like after we. Uh, service the turntable okay here we go we're gonna service this turntable I've already taken out um, <clears throat> the little clamp uh, which was on top of a washer there's a spring underneath there so you gotta be real careful that this whole thing doesn't start flying apart so we've got clamp washer spring gotta try to keep these things straight that's why I'm filming this uh, and then we've got this sprocket here with a washer on top of it right there alright and then we have an, a mechanism here which is part of the changer it looks like let's see I'm going to go through here, I think, um, with my lithium grease and any parts that, uh, any of these moving parts, I'm going to go ahead and grease these. Next, we're going to service this uh, motor, and to do that, we need to take these uh, C clamps off the mounting grommets. That's a little handy tool there. Pick these up when they inevitably fly across the room. It's good to have a magnetic tool of some kind. Let's see if we yeah, there we go. Oh, I heard something fall. What was that? Oh, that was a washer. Alright, that was one of the washers. Each of these has a washer on it. These grommets aren't too bad actually. They're not they're not broken or anything. This idler wheel has seen better days. We need to clean all of this off. Um, This is where a can of compressed air would come in real handy, but I don't have any. Okay, um, now these idler wheels can can uh, end up with dimples on them, and this one actually does does seem to have some couple there actually. The reason it ends up with dimples is because there's nothing to really retract it when not in use um, away from the 
the motor shaft so it ends always ends up these end up getting a little dimple here and there on them now this one's starting to dry and crack and all that stuff so what we're going here's what we're going to do with this um, we're going to use if I can find it going to use this stuff. Uh, this is automotive belt conditioner. Um, you spray this on your belts in your car and it's supposed to, uh, well it does actually, uh, sort of rejuvenate the rubber whatever belts. In this case it's going to be a rub rubber idler wheel that we're going to use it on. We don't want to get on anything else, none of the motor parts, uh, because this stuff actually sets up and becomes kind of sticky so what we uh, want to do is apply it with a uh, I'm gonna have to move this camera we want to apply it with a let's see there we go with a q-tip or three do is just get a little bit of this stuff on here I say a little and then there it goes but you'll notice I mean this this rubber will just soak this stuff up like it's just hungry Okay, now that we have that conditioned, we're going to come in here with some 3-in-1 uh, oil for the motor. And then we'll come back and clean this spindle. Alright, I have the bottom bracket um, of this motor disassembled. There's the, there's the shaft right there. And uh, as you can see, there's a wick here. There's an oil wick. We're going to fill that up with oil. Then we're going to use some alcohol to clean this shaft. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if we can get it to smoke. turntable might be even worse off than it was. Not sure what's up with that. We'll give it a bit to spin. Alright, well that's interesting. to actually take this table completely apart. This thing is not behaving right. Amp is better. But the changer is definitely not working right. Okay, here's the problem we're having with this thing now. Uh, this changer wheel, uh, this wheel right here, um, it's rubber. And what it does, it's misshapen. So what it does is it actually turns against uh, this wheel when the uh, changer mechanism is engaged. Um, and it's supposed to 
it's supposed to turn and, and move this whole this whole piece uh, outward um, which moves the arm and everything else associated with the changer um, problem is this is kind of this is kind of hardened over the years um, I've done my best with this belt conditioner um, that I use on a lot of a lot of this stuff to try to get it uh, supple again and um, have it absorb some of this stuff and uh, it's just it's it's too hard for this piece to get traction against it um, so what ends up happening is this just sits there and spins against the thing and rather than grabbing it uh, so a couple things I, I think I could do with this I've already tried to tighten this spring here which which basically um, pulls pulls this whole piece that way and smashes it up against uh, this piece to ensure it gets the most friction but that's not doing anything really um, I've actually you know tightened that considerably and uh, it's not really helping uh, it may be it may help uh, if I lubricated this like took all this off and lubricated but I kind of doubt it this is pretty free it's not that that's not moving it's just that it won't grab against this so but I don't know I'm kind of formulating a plan in my head and it's not fully formed um, I may end up, end up just uh, repairing this thing as best I can without having the changer mechanism work just basically making it a player um, which would be kind of sucky really because you can't put your you know a bunch of 45s on there on a stack and have, have it play each and every one which would be kind of cool um, so we'll see what we can do. I think you can send these things off and have these uh, reconditioned. Um, and it costs, I don't know, 30 or 40 bucks, which I mean, frankly, is more than this thing is even worth. So again, I'm kind of back to, um, I'm kind of really back to just putting this thing back together uh, and leaving it as is. And maybe even using it as a guitar amp. Um, you can plug in uh, directly to the thing and if nothing else we'll check it out with a guitar uh, just for the hell of it before we uh, leave this video but but yeah that's where we are right now the changer mechanism is probably not going to work due to this this piece just being a, a, a little bit too too crusty from years um, so yeah bummer but you know that's the nature of these things sometimes they're they're so old um, this one like I said is, is from the early 50s and uh, I just think it's it's just um, a little bit too far gone. Sad, but um, uh, you know this might be a project for someone else who has the expertise to actually uh, recondition this themselves and, and do it as a labor of love. It's not something I'm gonna I'm gonna pay money for to to have fixed. So yeah, again, bummer. Well, this whole armature of the changer mechanism just comes up and off of here. There's a couple of bolts uh, that get bolted in up here, and then there's one thumb screw that thumb screws onto this thing, and this whole thing comes up and off of here so we can gain access to the to the bottom. I still don't know if this is going to do any good. Uh, you can see how dirty this all is up under here. Uh, so we're going to definitely clean this. I'll take this off and lubricate this shaft really well um, and do my absolute best to um, to make this part supple again so that it will, it will actually function but this is the uh, part that's failing us right now we'll see what we can do with this thing okay the first thing I'm gonna try is actually cleaning this thing with um, uh, isopropyl alcohol I'm just gonna clean the hell out of it and then we're gonna drop it down in, into some uh, really hot water um, and just let it soak for a while and and uh, maybe um, the warm water will help make this thing a little more supple again and then we can reapply some of our uh, belt conditioner um, after the fact and uh, maybe get this thing supple enough that it'll work and, and in addition to cleaning the shaft which I think had a little bit of rust or something on it uh, not all this is from the shaft but this little this bit of rust colored stuff was so I, I think it's there might have even been some rust on this shaft so fingers crossed maybe between cleaning this sh and lubricating this shaft and uh, this one and cleaning this thing and putting it down in some uh, warm water for a little while and uh, and then reconditioning with belt conditioner maybe you know fingers crossed uh, that'll make a difference
Okay, I've managed to get this changer working. Uh, at least I think it's working the way that it's supposed to. There does not seem to be a mechanism that allows for the record to drop and for the arm to uh, simultaneously come over to the lead-in. Um, I think this, if I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken, but it did not seem as if there was a mechanism in this particular changer uh, to allow for automatic um, placement of the needle on the next record. So I think I think it's manual. Um, I really don't know. I'm not 100% sure. But um, everything else works and I was able to get the changer to finally work um, by using super glue on the um, on the changer wheel. Uh, essentially what I did was I, I took a took a little bit of super glue and uh, squirted it on the edge of the changer wheel and then manually turned everything uh, so that it um, worked its way around and around and around and kind of built up a layer of coarse uh, super glue all the way around the changer wheel so now everything works the way I think it's working the way it's supposed to um, it does drop a record uh, the arm lifts up and acts like it's going to go to a lead in but it doesn't do that uh, it just goes right back down and again I don't see a mechanism to even allow for that um, I'll, I'll look again and, and uh, maybe do some more research but everything does appear to be working the way it's supposed to It is a little bit quiet. I have the amp uh, cranked all the way up, and I think that's down to the cartridge just being really weak. Um, it probably needs a, a new cartridge. And it does return the way it's supposed to. Uh, but again, you know, when the next record would drop at that point, it would drop the next record, but you would have to come over to the record player uh, and manually put the needle on the next lead in. Uh, it's not going to do that on its own. Um, so interesting. I, I, I don't, uh, I don't know to be honest if that's supposed to be that way. Um, but again, it doesn't appear that there's any kind of mechanism. Uh, that would allow for it to do that so call me spoiled I guess I would like to see that go over and actually start the record without me having to place the needle So yeah, that's an early 1950s uh, RCA 45 record player model 45-EY-4. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please hit the subscribe button for more videos like this in the future. And for now, y'all take care.